Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I am so stoked to bring you this interview because she's on the left coast out there on the West Coast. She has got, if you go to her webpage, which is in the show notes, don't go now, but she's got shout outs on some pretty big A-listers and people that I like immensely respect. And I have with me Jocelyn Jones. She's been an acting teacher for over 30 years, which you'll never know it. No, it can be that long if you're watching. From A-list movie stars to hand-picked beginners, she is known for offering insights and techniques that enhance her clients' confidence, provide consistent inspirational results, and guide them to their own unique perspectives. Her memoir is a blueprint for awakening and connecting to the spirit within, and it's in the Awesome Sauce book, which is on Amazon, which I, but don't go there yet. I'm going to have a free book giveaway <laughs> at the end where Jocelyn's going to sign it for you and mail it out, but it'll be on Time to Shine Today's Dime. So Jocelyn, thank you so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to the Time to Shine Today podcast varsity squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? You know, it changes. Uh, I love green because it's the color of the earth. Yes, but lately I've been very attracted to orange, and I really don't fun. know why. Just it just <laughs> wakes me up, you know. I go orange, and I've been putting it in the house, and I'm putting it in the garden, <laughs> and you know, I just want orange flowers, and you know, love it, love it. So, can we get to the roots? Because people just don't become an acting teacher that are able to teach the names that are on. You know, your website, you know, people oh. just don't say, oh, look at me, I'm a teacher, follow me. You know, you, there was obviously some, you know, hills to climb and some valleys to go through. And I'd love to hear about that. Okay, great. I'm going to do this as concisely as I can. You're fine. I was, I was raised uh, on the East Coast on the Hudson River Valley, which has a lot of artist uh, communities. And I was my, both of my parents were artists. My father was an actor. He started on Broadway. He ended in Hollywood. You know, they pulled all those Broadway actors out to LA because, you know, they needed them. Television was exploding. Right. My mother was a photographer and a landscape architect. And I would, you know, artists in the 60s, you know, they kind of put their kids on the planet and said, go. And there was not a lot of parental uh, involvement. And uh, I was a lonely kid and uh, kind of sad and couldn't figure out where there was leadership. And so I lived in the woods. We lived in the woods. And so I would play in the woods and I gained a very strong attachment to nature, uh, really like mother nature, that was my advisor. And within my, you know, uh, adventures in the woods, this relationship became my connection to spirit, I could literally be guided, but I could ask questions, and I could hear answers. Um, you know, the first time I was walking to school, and I was, you know, it was a couple of days before my birthday, and you know, I was going, I can't understand why my parents don't, you know, <laughs> love me. I mean, what, what's the matter with me? What happened here? I mm. came, I have gifts to give. I want to, you know, and, uh, and I, I got this concept, which is, well, we're here and we might have to be enough. And that communication, that trust and faith in that own inner voice, my own inner voice guided me through my life. So being raised with artists is a blessing. And then it had that sadness, but those sadnesses, you know, we overcome and those are the things that make us the person that we are, that we become, you know? So um, I didn't want to be an actor. I became an actor. That's a long story. I thought <laughs> one actor in the family was enough, but evidently not. I loved acting. But, uh, you know, I have a kind of a mind, I like puzzles. And so I really studied the structure and the techniques of acting because I knew it wasn't just about, you know, learning the lines and saying the lines and pretending to be, you know, I right. knew there was other, other things involved. Sure. And then, uh, you know, I became, I always knew I would be a teacher. I, it was in me. I think if you're, you know, an educator, a teacher, you know, you have this desire to uplift people you know, that's in you. And if you follow that path, it will lead you to where you need to be. So I started teaching and my classes were always full. I knew that teaching was not about you. It was not about ego. It was not about the teacher. Although a lot of the acting classes I went to, there was this very guru teacher. kind Of, of course. Thing. Sure. And uh, I really resented that. And I thought it was really bad for the students and your right. job is to like uplift them. So what are you doing right. with that? 
Well, I'm getting uh, you ready for the sharks out there. It's like, dude, I just want to learn yeah, art, yes, right? Yes, exactly. That's just yeah. nonsense, you know? Right. Um, so I tried to teach with encouragement and kindness, and uh, I was very good at teaching technique. Well, after mm -hmm. you teach technique, you know, I have actors who've been with me for 20 years. After you teach technique, they need something else, and that's inspiration. So the same, it's really about questions, Scott. It's about questioning yourself. Like that child who was walking to school that day before her birthday asked a question, why? Why, 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 why do I not have this connection? Right. And I got an answer. So I'm very big on meditative practice, journaling Ooh. practices, things that will take you within so that you can kind of breathing into your heart, just breathing into your heart two, three times is an extraordinary exercise because your spirit is there, you know? Right. So you breathe into your heart and ask questions in a, in a meditative space because meditation creates space and things come in from the ether. The answer comes in from, yes. sometimes it feels without, sometimes it feels within. And you know, the beautiful thing, Scott, is, is that so many of us are going after this same message in different ways yes. from sports people to the people that you have on your show. You had a guy about education and parenting recently. He was <laughs> fabulous. Yeah. We're all talking about the same thing, which is becoming the best person that you can be. And I think people are starving for it yes. because we're living in a world that we don't really agree with. We don't agree with these disagree, you know, this, sure. this uh, separations and such. Right. We, we don't, we want, we know that people need to be kind. We know that manners need to return. We know that that's our best self moving Absolutely. forward and that we change the world in that way. And I love that. It sounds to me like a lot of what you have is gut and intuition. Let me ask some that mm -hmm. intuition that really you first noticed in the woods you know, that was telling you, does that yeah. follow you around through life and keep you curious? It does. It does. does it? And, and that's what I wanted to teach others. Like, you know, the idea was to make a leap from teaching actors to teaching people who are lost. You just want you to know, level up their lives. They know there's they something. Level up their lives. That's perfect. That's exactly right. And they want to connect to themselves they want to know they want to have an idea of where am I going they feel a little lost people are feeling a little lost yeah. and I want to say the answers are in you and you can use these same Ooh, techniques that, is that awesome. artists use sure. to find the artist in you because you know what Scott there's an artist in every everybody yeah everyone and your first thank you for saying that because I can't life. draw a stick figure right or no. act for anything which I mean, I shouldn't say that I have been on like little stuff, but but there's something that was in there, you know, and, yeah. and I, I needed someone like you back then to help me flex my intuition muscle and follow yes. the stuff, you know, yes. that's what you yes. do. Yes. So if you're working with somebody, maybe they, they're coming to you and, you know, they're, they're thinking, oh, I really need to level up my life in, in this or with an acting. Is there any secret sauce at the start in the discovery process, if you don't mind sharing to maybe help them identify or bring to the surface their blind spot? Yeah. You know, there's a question that my father asked me as a child and it became, you know, cornerstone to my life, this question, which is if you could have, because I was this rebellious teenager mm -hmm. and I was sort of off the walls and my dad kind of sat me down one day and said, listen, Jossie, if you could have anything in the world, barring all obstacles, there are no obstacles, you can have it. What is it? And it, you know, really makes you think, do you know how many people can't answer that question? Right. You know, people who Thank you. are yes. very far along in their careers. Right. And they go, I don't know, Jocelyn. I said, well, I want you to think about that. Right. And I want you to journal about that. Yes. Really, no obstacles. What is it? Let's get really honest with that question. If you I could find, have anything in the world. I find so many people, like they have goals, but goals are finite. Mm -hmm. But yeah. with my with my coaching, I, I help set up that vision because vision you can laterally move and and adjust it. Where goals are a goal, and I, I'm sure yeah. you're finding that out with an actor that says, "I'm t I'm putting this like on a grand scale. I want to win an Oscar, right? That's a goal, yeah, right, yeah." But yeah. the, the or let, I mean, let's well, level it down. That's a fantasy, right? That's let's a, level I it down. The, yeah, I want to be 
called in for auditions. Let, let's level it yeah. down, not even Oscar, but that like that just getting to that is a goal. But yeah. what is be- beyond that? Like, what do you see? Is that what you really try to pull out of your clients? Well, you know, I do it. My clients are actors. So I do it within the acting. It's like you have this part. I work with people after. Now I work with people after they've booked the big movie. And they come and they say. That's awesome. They go, what, what, you know, what should I do? You know, what should I do with this part to make the biggest, to get the Oscar? (laughs) Right. And, uh, you know, my first questions are internal. They're like, why, why, why do you think this part came to you? Right. Why? Why now in your life? Mm. What's going on in your life that this part landed, which I could then translate to anybody in the world. What's going on in your life? Thank you. Experience just yes. happened to you. And um, what do you have for this part that nobody else has? Same translation. What do you in life yeah. have to offer that nobody else has to offer? And so, you know, those exercises are in the book. I mean, there's a whole series of questions sure. about where it goes. These are the questions the actor is acting, asking, and these are the same way that you would apply those questions to your life. So actors ask, where am I? So people should ask, where do I want to be? You know, oh, and then so it, it just translates like that. It blows my mind that wow. it's the same process, it no matter back. what it is, but First, you have to know what you want. But you said something really interesting to me um, about that, the goal and what's the difference between the goal and the vision. And I have a whole chapter on that in the book, that exact topic, Mm. that a goal, you know, uh, you have many goals that, okay, so for, uh, you know, you're very complimentary to me. I'm 72 years old and I just published my first book. Wow, so, away. and I'm just, you know, producing my first series independently. So these things can happen later in life. So the vision is to write a book about how acting technique can help someone in their life, create their life. Love right. It. That was We're my, that was my vision. That yeah. was my vision. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, the goals became chapter one. The goals became, you know, find out about publishing. The goal, there were all, there were a thousand goals that led to that. Right. And this is also in the book, a whole chapter on, on the structure of this. There are a thousand goals that lead to that vision. And then underneath the goals are the steps. Okay, to get <laughs> my SAG right. card, I have to do this, 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 and this. Right. So that's, that's, it's that's the that's the, the alignment. Pyramid. Yeah, Love that's it. the alignment. Love it. So maybe if you're starting to work with somebody, is there and again maybe we're still in the discovery period a little bit? Is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do? Uh that's a good question. Um you know, a question for me. Hmm. I can't think of anything except <laughs> I want them to be open. And, you know, yeah. here's an interesting thing. When you give space to someone by really listening to them, and I've watched your shows and you're an incredible interview Thank you. with great care and who knows how to create space. And you create that space by really listening, by having a real interest in that moment on what's going on. I'm being so selfish because I want to learn. But thank well, you. That's the biggest compliment ever. Know, thank you. Uh, if you do that as a as a coach, as a teacher, as an educator, you create space for the person to be who they are. They will immediately feel that, and they will rise to their best self. You that know? is awesome. Um, wow! Just by just by listening, just by really caring, um, and acknowledging, you're a person. I'm a person. That's that's beautiful that, that you said that because in. I, I just really believe it with, even with my coaching clients, which has overlapped in my life, you know, I'm 50 now and there's a lot of things I, I'm at halftime with what I call it. And it's just, yeah. I, once I started l- listening with my neck, I meaning like really getting into it, you know, like when mm-hmm. someone's telling me someone, whether it's a client or a friend, you know, and like you just said, I'm going to use creating space for the rest of my life right now, just because I yeah. see, I've heard it before, but the way you put it is absolutely beautiful. So thank you. Um, have you seen the movie Back to the Future? You never have. Okay, so it's Michael J. Fox. 
He goes yes, back in time, blah, blah, yep. blah, right? So yep. we'll get that DeLorean with, with, Michael, with Marty McFly, right? We'll okay. go back to the double deuce, the 22-year-old, 20, you know, Jocelyn, which I can't believe it's 50 years ago, but the 22-year-old Jocelyn. Is there wow. any knowledge nuggets, so we call them here at Time Shine today, that you might not change anything because your journey is like you have a beautiful daughter, grandbaby, whatnot, right? But maybe to help her shorten her learning curve or blast through maybe just a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. I'll go back to creating space. Um, you know, when we're young, we're just ruled by our hormones and our thinking. Yes. There's so much thinking going on. Is he right. going to like me? If I wear this shirt, I think he'll like me. Is right. he going to call? Is she? She doesn't like me. I'm going to get an F. You know, whatever it is, we and I was tremendously insecure. But because I'm from New York, I, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't know that. The you wouldn't know it because the facade people can put on. Especially, I have to interject because I moved to South Florida on the East Coast. Yep. And the I-95 corridor comes down here, right? Yep. And I'm from the Midwest where when I meet you one day, when I'm on the left coast, I'm going to give you a hug and whatnot. And I'm sure you'll reciprocate yep. and whatnot. But here, when I would meet people, I'd go to give them hugs and be like, get the hell away from me. Like, what are yep. you doing? And so me being curious, I did a deep dive and said, Why? aren't these people liking me? I was like on the verge of tears, right? And yeah. come to find out that a lot of the people there, they live on top of each other. That's so populated that they just need their space. So that's what I would do is I give them their space. Like you say, create that space of comfort. Yep. And then yep. next thing you know, some of my best friends are from Brooklyn. I'm getting invited for the best Italian dinners, hugs, kisses on both yep. cheeks from the moms. It's yep. fantastic. So thank you for, yep. you know, for saying that, you know. For the New Yorker thing. Yeah. The, the New Yorkers, like, you know, you can tell because we relax our limbs. Yes. We drop our limbs. We, right. And we look like, I'm I'm so cool. You know, you don't get, I, ask me if I care. I don't care. I'm so <laughs> cool. So we feign this kind of uh, relaxation. So if I was to talk to myself at 22, I would say, learn how to meditate, mm. uh, journal, create space because when you're in the moment you have nothing but space the entire universe is your space when you are truly in the moment actors want to act in the moment everybody's talking about how do i be in the moment how do you be in the moment oh I mean, my I gosh have entire chapters Dude. on it one of them is to observe without judgment Scott, imagine if we were taught as children how to observe without judgment to really take things in and discover for yourself what's going on there. We're not wow. taught that. We're taught to observe and compare it to every the entire bank of our knowledge and compare yeah. it to this one or that. We're taught to compare. We're taught to judge. Somehow we feel that makes us safe. That but, is incredible that you said that because so many people have a foot in the future, a foot in the past, and they piss all over the present, right? But what yeah, you just exactly. said about when you live in the moment, the entire universe is yours. Like yeah. you can control your destiny. You can manifest anything. That is, that, that's beautiful. Thank you and so much. So if you have faith in it, you know, part of it is to, I want to restore faith, Scott, but you know, faith is dicey because then we roll over into religion and religion, we, right. we don't, we don't want to do that. Faith and religion have nothing to do with anything. Religion should be a reflection of personal faith. Absolutely. So um, how do we restore personal faith? We restore faith in ourselves and we can trust ourselves that we can come to the moment that we can observe without judgment, that we can help each other, that we can be our best selves. You know, in the book, I talk about what are your visions? You want a vision where you are contributing. You want to contribute. If we all begin to contribute instead of buck up against each other, you know, we'll, we'll do, we'll survive. <laughs> Love we it. realize what we need to do to save the planet and to to put humanity on an uplifting course because you know i remember when we wanted to have the best education in the world when we wanted to everybody to have you know enough money and enough care right and i think we can get back to that i think that's our nature and i think that's why you and i and 
you sure. know, John Wood's pyramid. Everybody is, <laughs> if you don't remember right. John Wood's pyramid, that was- Oh, that John Wood, I have pyramid. it right here on my wall. Yeah. Leadership, yeah, it's right here. Yep, there you go. So tell your people, if they don't know what this is, look this up because <laughs> it's very inspiring. Just this one little piece of page. Every single one of my clients of gets that in the welcome pack. From, oh yeah. From my time to shine today coaching. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> that, you and I are, are like brother and sisters from different mistress. I love this. So yes. How do you want your dash remembered? That little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and death date, which hopefully it's way down the line. But how does Jocelyn want her dash remembered? I helped. I helped. I was here to help and I helped. I love it. And that's that's enough. So what do you think people then misunderstand the most about Jocelyn? Well, you know, that's a big question because people have, you know, the, they have a, their beingness, who they are spiritually, who they are as a being in the moment. Right. And then we have personalities and we love our personalities. We're just crazy about our personalities. Um, we work on them our whole life and they defend us and we think we are our personalities. Right. So I am most misunderstood because I have, you know, personality things that I developed as defenses because I was so insecure. So, you know, uh, that's what people misunderstand me, that I don't care or that I'm uppity or uh, superior or, you know, all these sure. things that I put on to protect myself. Oh, I love and, that. uh, that's transparent. Me, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, part of being a, an educator is to look past people's personalities and their defenses because it really doesn't have very much to do with them. That's huge. Wow. So is there anything in the past year or so that's less than $100 that you bought that's really leveled you up? Um, yeah, less than $100. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, it uh, can be a little bit more. Pilates classes. Nice. Really. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I just realized I have, I'm, I'm in my age. I have, I have a grandbaby. I want to be around. So I have Movement, to baby. Yeah. Got to move. You got to move and you yeah. got to move every single day. And so yeah. you got to find out what you like. And what I love is, you know, I used to be a dancer. So I love Pilates and I love walking. I so, love that you said that, <clears throat> that you're getting after that in your life because <clears throat> I was at a car wash and this guy walks up I'm 6'1 I'm 260 I'm pretty well put together a big guy this guy walks up and I was reading my kindle and he taps me and he's like where where do you lift or where do you work out I'm like I just do pizza and beer and I thought the conversation was gonna end there just you know it's a joke but I looked up this guy the sun was behind him it's like he was shining bright right yeah, Tell yeah. he had some experience under him and so I'm like yeah. how old are you it's like 86 and I'm like, wow. damn, like, what's the secret? He's like, I get up every day and chase energy. And I'm like, chasing, because, you know, the law of attraction, you don't chase anything. He's like, listen, that coyote sees a rabbit. You think he's just, the rabbit's going to come to him? He's like, if he's strategic and he does it right, the coyote eats. So I started thinking. So this guy lustedly mentored me through some stuff um, differently. And he's also my pickleball partner. Um, but like he's 87 now or 88 I, and it's just like so what you were beautiful. saying movement is key in life uh, well, movement no matter is what key in life but also receiving the way you received that guy is amazing you know yeah. you 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 handed off a joke which was really very funny mm -hmm. but then you put your attention on him you gave him yeah. that space and yeah. he was shining he had light <clears throat> behind him which is yeah. always you know this person is sent to you with a it gift. was it, it was and you and, received it yeah and come to find out and nothing there's nothing big that, and i'm not trying to brag on him or on my suffering notes but he's a billionaire right mm -hmm. and he invites me over once a week we have coffee and i'm able to pick his brain and just about six seven years ago i decided to make my superpower curiosity right mm -hmm. that's all i care about now is just being curious and i learned it from my two black rescue cats Right. And I have a rescue pity people as well. And they're just so curious. I'm like, wow, you know, that's it. And that's what really led to that being in the moment. Yes. So yeah. what is Jocelyn's definition of a life well lived? I think a life well lived is a feeling that you have a purpose and that that purpose involves con contributing to the human condition as a whole. 
Um, and, and receiving that from yourself, being good to yourself, you know, uh, taking wins along the way. It's very important. And it's important to talk to all those different parts of ourselves. The kid who got hurt and is still feeling hurt and bruised and pissed off. And right. so now she, she behaves in these manners that are not <clears throat> optimum. You, you don't let you chase energy. They're actually negative. They will take right. you away from, you know. And then you learn to talk to those parts of yourself. So like, you know, okay, honey, let's, you know, you don't want to walk. Well, let's just walk down the block. And there if you, you go. don't want to walk past yeah. the block, we'll be okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> or the teenager who says, you know, F you, F you, F you. <laughs> okay, well, but well, who is that person really? Just put your attention on them as a human being and see what you see. You know, I know you're angry with them. They've obviously mm -hmm. hit a chord, but... You know, so a life well lived is uh, walking forward with your best self. I love that. I love it. And squad, we are going to take my good friend, rock star Jocelyn, through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today. Podcast Varsity Squad, we're back. And Jocelyn, I'm going to make it a plan to meet you on over on the West Coast and yes. maybe grab a coffee or a, a lunch or something. And, and some of these questions we'll probably talk about or, you know, discuss in maybe 15, 20 minutes each question. But in time to shine today, you have five seconds to answer with no <laughs> explanations. They can all be answered that way. You ready okay. to rock? All right. Yeah. Let's level up, Jocelyn. What is the best leveling up advice Jocelyn's ever received? Uh, do it now. And which <sighs> I turned into, which I turned into do it anyway. Now, let's share one of your personal habits that contributes to your, your success meditation love it so if you see me walking in to anywhere you're like ah oh, fergie looks like he's in his doldrums a little bit other than waking the spirit within what book might you hand me because you're down and out um maybe the artist way oh love it great great read yeah. nicknames growing up jossie jossie AJ. i can see that yeah. love it yeah most commonly used emoji, if any, when you text. Heart. There you go. I also I do a heart with a leaf because of leaf. nature. <laughs> Love it. Chess checkers or monopoly. Chess. Wow. I, go to ice cream flavor. Coffee. <laughs> Love it. There's a sandwich called the Jossie. Build that sandwich for me. Uh, homemade whole wheat bread. Little mayo, avocado, sprouts, mm. tomatoes, cucumbers, second layer, lots of salt and pepper, second layer of homemade wheat bread, cut it in half. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. Sounds yummy. Hungry now. Favorite charity and organization you like to give your time and or money to? Uh, Doctors Without Borders and all oh, kinds of it. things to do with saving nature and animals and extinction and all of that. Love it. So last question. You can elaborate on this. But what is the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? Oh, man, 60s, without doubt. It was the Renaissance. You know, and I lived it. You know, <laughs> I, you I, lived I heard, it? I heard, you know, <laughs> I heard uh, Taylor's, James Taylor's first album. You know, I mean, we waited for the records at the store. Wow. It was amazing to watch the Beatles unfold, watch the Rolling Stones unfold. What, you did, on. too. I just the can't believe you're 72. So you got to experience a lot of that awesome stuff, yeah. man. It's, it's but beautiful. There's, I just want to say one thing about being 72. It's never too late. If never. I'm writing my book at 72, if I'm producing, you know, a 16 episode series at 72, you can certainly do all kinds of things in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s and 60s. And, you know, I they're all it. great decades. So how can we find you, Jocelyn? Oh, you can find me under Jocelyn Jones Studio, uh, uh, Jocelyn Jones Acting Class on Facebook, Jocelyn Jones Studio on Instagram that really has a lot of in information there. Uh, JocelynJonesStudio.com is the website and the uh, which is being rebuilt for the documentary and the documentary will come out there. Oh, beautiful. Wow. What documentary? Oh, it's called uh, In Class with Jocelyn Jones. It's a 16-episode masterclass with uh, 
absolutely breathtaking actors. So if you ever wondered what an acting class was all about mm. and the conversations between teacher and student and the kind of coaching and uh, such, and to see 16 magnificent actors in interviews, dances, scenes, critiques. Is it rolled out uh, all at once or is it yeah, gradual? It's coming okay. out as a so they can learn radio. and watch at their at their convenience then. Okay. And yes, that exactly. when does that roll out then? And the next couple of months. We're just finishing the final edits. Beautiful. Probably February. Okay. Yeah. Good. It's January now. So February actually worked perfect because that's when your show's probably going to drop. So how about yeah. the how about your book, Artist? The awakening, the spirit within. Yeah, how about it? It's on Amazon. Yeah, you. Um, it dropped what May of last year, and it's, it it's dropped uh, last year, February twenty second. So okay. it was two twenty two twenty two, which uh, I day after my numbers. birthday. Cheers. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm twenty four. So there you go. I'm February Pisces, 24. baby. Love yeah, it. Pisces. No wonder we get along. So yeah. Much. Awesome. So it's it's a memoir of yours or it's a yeah it's a hybrid memoir um you know the first editor who read it said this is two books you can't do this this is a hybrid memoir it's impossible and i said okay next editor and the next editor was phenomenal they took the whole book apart put it back together put all the exercises at the end of the chapters and uh so it's really the stories the things that occurred in my life that taught me the lessons that i then fashioned into a key to give to you well, I have to put you in touch with a good friend of mine, Leslie Ram, Ramus, Ramuson. She lives over on the, the West Coast as well. And she wrote a lot of the sitcoms and stuff like that in the 80s for Major Dad and you know stuff like that. I think there'd be a great connection for you. So I just took a note for Wonderful. that. I think you guys would have so much to talk about. I'd like to be a fly on the wall during that conversation. <laughs> so if you could do me one last solid and leave us with one last knowledge nugget we can take with us, internalize, and take action on. Um, I would say uh, to keep, ask, meditate, ask yourself, what is it that I want more than anything in the world, barring all obstacles? And You were taught as a baby, as a kid. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And Squad, I just had a really, I didn't know which way I was going to take this interview with my good friend Jocelyn, because... You know, it's like teacher, actors, I just didn't really see, but man, it's just mesh. And I have so many, I have three pages of notes. You know, Jocelyn had, you know, it's really strong attachment to mother nature and mother nature really kind of became her advisor by, you know, really tickling that intuition muscle and to teach her to really trust her own inner voice to become that guide. You know, she wants us to remember to breathe into your heart through meditation and the answers will arrive if you're ready and you let them arrive you know and someone like jocelyn will help you flex those intuition muscles and as a, whether a teacher or read her book and she wants you to ask yourself I, i'm going to start asking myself this even myself if you could have anything barring any obstacles in your life what would you want it, it, it's that's just so beautiful and knowing that you can ask yourself you know what is going on to make this happen for me, you know, and take that lessons learned and switch it into what I can offer the world. You know, a great coach or a teacher, Jaslyn reminded us, creates the space for them to be who they are. And I'm going to kind of circle back into learning to meditate, journal, create space for yourself, because when you're in the moment, and listen to this, when you're in the moment, the entire universe is yours. She wants you to really learn to observe without judgment. She's a person that has a passion to see people with a vision, help them with their vision, and contru contribute to society in, in a phenomenal way. It, Jocelyn's planting trees she's never going to sit in the shade of. I guarantee you. You know, and she, I also see kind of like a mentoring side of her as well. And the, I believe that the more you mentor, the more immortal you become. And that's what is happening with my good friend Jocelyn. She levels up her health. She levels up her wealth. She's beautiful. She's humble, yet she's hungry. She's earned her varsity squad letter here at Time to Shine today. Thank you so much for coming on, Jocelyn. I absolutely love your guts. <laughs> Thank you so much, Scott. This has been such a pleasure to meet you. I'm Yay. so glad you're on the planet and part of you too. the squad, my, my squad too. And I <laughs> cried when you said she's planting seeds for trees oh. for shade I, I that just <laughs> struck my heart it was very beautiful 
You're welcome. So, um, thank you for what you do. Thank you for having me on. I love meeting you and I'm hey. sure it's not the last time. No, you meet in the flesh soon. I promise. Yeah. Okay. okay good. Have a great day.